Good morning. It's Friday, October 28th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Triumph of Evil. In our scriptures, Habakkuk, chapter 1. This is where the prophet writes, This is the message that the prophet Habakkuk received in a vision. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed, and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous, so that justice has become perverted. The Lord replied, Look around at the nations, look and be amazed, for I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. I am raising up the Babylonians, a cruel and violent people. They will march across the world and conquer other lands. They are notorious for their cruelty and do whatever they like. Their horses are swifter than cheetahs and fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their charioteers charge from far away. Like eagles they swoop down to devour their prey. On they come, all bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind, sweeping captives ahead of them like sand. They scoff at kings and princes and scorn all their fortresses. They simply pile ramps of earth against their walls and capture them. They sweep past like the wind and are gone. But they are deeply guilty, for their own strength is their God. O Lord, my God, my Holy One, you who are eternal, surely you do not plan to wipe us out. O Lord, our rock, you have sent these Babylonians to correct us, to punish us for our many sins. But you are pure and cannot stand the sight of evil. Will you wink at their treachery? Should you be silent while the wicked swallow up people more righteous than they? Habakkuk's conversation with the Lord was Israel's version of Why do bad things happen to good people? Although the prophet had eyes and could see the myriad of ways God's people had forfeited any right to being called God's people, he still had trouble getting his mind around why God would use such a vile nation as Babylon to carry out his punishment. In the daylight of hindsight, I am certain Jewish scholars have been able to gain perspective that God allows us to choose our quote-unquote fate because of free will. My mother was an easygoing sort, hesitant to mete out harshness of any kind. One of her strong suits was patience. Her youngest child, Russell, did not get that gene. Often when my youthful audaciousness devised plans that were well beyond caution, mom would simply say, no, I don't think so. To be fair, Mom would always give me the rundown on how dangerous the consequences might prove, but Russell would whine and try to reason with her until even that sweet-natured patience wore thin. Eventually, she would say, Do what you want. In my own perspective, informed by decades of hindsight and well-earned heartaches, The wisdom of Mom's objections to my flawed and selfish plans strikes me as mostly godly wisdom and righteousness. She marched to a higher bar of behavior than her self-centered son. The much-published saying of Edmund Burke, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing, is largely true, but not exclusively so. Evil can triumph when so-called good people fail to see the handwriting on the wall about our responsibility to live up to the name we claim. God will not be mocked. People may assume God is not monitoring human behavior. That does not make it so. There is accountability for every moment we exist. For you today. The fate, so-called, of America is still in the balance. Our national behavior will decide if evil will triumph 
or if we will be one nation under God. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.